like this? Yeah. Better, yeah. So I'm a, I'm a GIS um, project manager camp to camp. Um, and yeah, so we just wanted to give you an, an, an update on the Geo Orchestra software project. And uh, right. I could use this one. Just stay close to the microphone. All right. Um, so the current version 19.04. Um, for this one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> even better. Um, here we go. So just a couple of slides on uh, camp to camp if you haven't heard of the company before. Um, there is um, two locations in um, Switzerland. The main office is in Lausanne and um, there's also two offices now in France, Chambéry and uh, Paris, and also one site in uh, Germany, the Munich office. And uh, it, I guess it's right to say that Camp to Camp just turned 18, so it was uh, founded in 2001. Um, and there is now a number of departments um, where uh, Camp to Camp has expertise in. Um, the main one is still geospatial, but there's also um, growing work in the infrastructure department um, and also some work on business solutions and uh, subscriptions for example for uh, Red Hat uh, licenses. Um, okay, but back to the main point. So what is GeOrchestra? Um, it's um, compliant with um, Inspire and it's a spatial data infrastructure that was born about 10 years ago as part of a software project um, for the region of Brittany in the northwest of France. And uh, since it was accepted quite well, it turned into, uh, got turned into an open source project. And now more and more regions are using it across France and, uh, and also internationally. Um, and so it, it combines uh, three quite known components, the Geo Network, um, Geo Server, and uh, Geo Web Cage. So here's just some examples of, of users. Uh, we got the, the state of Bolivia. Um, they're running in uh, Geo Orchestra implementation. Um, we have, the, yeah, as I said, a few regions in France. Um, also down at the communal level, um, um, a good e example is the, the city of uh, uh, Rennes, um, um, where they kind of wanted to move towards a, a, s a smart city that uh, gives their citizens access to open data. And that's how they also started using uh, Geo Orchestra as a tool. And we have one another project, there is a talk at this year's Phosphor G on this project uh, um, as well, um, which is the fiber to the home telecom project. So, um, and there G Orchestra has actually used cloud-based, so um, uh, infrastructure as code, um, which makes this quite an innovative project and we're still learning about the potential of, um, yeah, moving to the cloud, the, the spatial data infrastructure. Um, so yeah, these are just some examples of um, different looks um, of Geo Orchestra. So um, yeah, if usually if it's uh, if it comes from Europe, um, um, they start with the um, Inspire themes, but there's obviously other ways of uh, um, providing the data in different uh, groups and so on. Um, so, so the, what's really key is obviously to exchange data or provide a platform for data, but also to uh, share services. So um, um, we feel like it's quite a strong um, yeah, overall package if you want to share data and services. And you can, there's communication between services, different clients, both internally and externally. Um, so, yeah. 
Um, and if you've worked with G-Orchestra before or have heard of it, um, here's just a few updates. What are the latest uh, um, improvements on the, on the project? Um, it now supports um, S3 hosted um, cloud optimized GeoTIFF. So um, it kind of means you can run an HTTP uh, range request, so you don't have to download the entire GeoTIFF, but you can go from uh, for a certain pixel range. Um, then we have the configuration made easier by using factorized properties across modules. So because it's module based, um, you have a number of properties that you have to define for each module, such as the, the domain, URL, um, and uh, yeah, other. <laughs> um, sorry. Yeah, domain URL um, and uh, the, the information on the security, the, the data bank. And this is all in one file now. So um, um, it's a lot easier to manage. And there have been some improvements on the database and the LDAP. Um, security side um, and also some new functionality around uh, Docker. So uh, integration tests can now be run using the console um, and uh, Geo Network uh, image has a, a re reduced size. So this shows some of the, or well, the key components of the SDI. Obviously, GeoServer, it has uh, version 2.15 integrated, um, not quite the latest Geo Network um, version yet, 3.4, but um, um, that will also be updated eventually. And as you can see, the standard viewer is still um, Mapfish. So, because you have such a quite complex modular structure, testing is quite important. Um, so, um, we use uh, Jenkins um, for the running those tests and um, also for a few more things. Um, some of the tests are run daily um, and um, using this we can install um, the GDI in different environments. So uh, it could be, uh, com comes as a Debian package or even uh, a, as a, a Docker image. Here are just some of the, the services that are integrated, um, the, the all the standard uh, data transfer services, uh, WMS, WFS. Um, there is um, client endpoints with um, QGIS and uh, with the latest GeoServer version um, it is also possible to use vector tiles. Um, GeoTools um, is also quite useful to have that as a component because it, it adds just a few more data formats um, they can be um, read and written um, in the um, SDI. I've just one slide on the deployment. Um, that's a bit of a, a, a his historical order as well. Um, yeah, Debian package um, can be run as a Debian package. Um, the, the first time it was made available um, as a uh, a part of an Ansible project that actually came from the user community. So someone provided a recipe for using Ansible. Um, if you have several Docker containers, um, we, we've also um, yeah, had success at uh, organizing all of that using Rancher. And um, on the right, that's an example from, I guess, the te technology or the, the deployment is used by the De Deutsche Telekom project. So in this case, um, where, um, like I said before, it's infrastructure as code. So um, you have an array of Docker images um, 
and they they all they are all part of an open shift project and uh, on top of that you have the tool helm that actually um, manages and um, the deployment of such a project or array of docker images inside the uh, red hat openshift for um data um sources yeah so it's uh, the the most common ways are still using uh, postgres ql database um, or geotiff files um, but you can also store it in any geo tool compatible data format all right so now i thought i'd like to show you just some some visual looks of different implementations of geo orchestra so this is um, the start when you get to the platform on of geo geo britannia and um, so you got the inspired themes but then they also have which i find quite useful um, some different groupings that allow you to access more directly uh, spatial data that has a time component um, for example or feature catalogs and the latest implementation is uh, geo to france um, they had five key objectives so obviously um, giving a easy access to data is one of them and uh, exchange of data and so on um, this is what it looks like so they also um, the user or um, whoever wants to engage with their platform gets to the inspire themes first um, that could also be quite useful at the bottom you get the latest data sets and um, also the most frequently viewed so uh, um, that's how the, the search looks like um, for data sets. So you have uh, quite a large um, variety of filters, um, theme based, uh, search by time, by format, etc. Um, yeah, you can also obviously use the direct search and um, search for services only and um, it also has a, um, a spatial filter option so just shown by the red rectangle you can yeah run a spatial within or intersect filter on the what's available um, metadata can be exported so um, downloaded as a PDF zip file different different formats um, you, there's also uh, yeah the functionality to actually publish metadata um, uh, using a, a CSW service and uh, if you yeah on geo to France they also show you the whole range of um, services um, for sharing data and the uh, um, specific um, documents for each service so uh, this is the the interface you get to if you want to set up a web map service so it's quite intuitive i guess you can just yeah click through all of these attributes and then eventually um, the the service should be publishable um, the viewer, so um, that's that's the standard viewer, the Mapfish viewer, and because um, some people might want to use a different viewer, and that's why uh, in a previous project with the company Terrestris, um, the their Shogun uh, viewer was um, implemented, um, and yeah so you get a different look for uh, exploring new layers and um, yeah it also has a thesaurus um, functionality for um, um, that also gives you more filtering 
capabilities. Um, um, in this case, yeah, you're running a theme-based Tethorus search um, based on the inspired themes. And that's one of the advantages of having a, a community-driven project. Um, there is uh, additional um, plugins or tools that can be integrated. Um, elevation profiles, that's the first one or even uh, calculating a, a, a drainage basin. Um, so those uh, functions were provided by people from the community. Um, security is obviously key. Um, so the single sign-on solution is uh, uh, run by the CAR software. And, uh, and LDAP is still used for um, managing users' roles and uh, and uh, the user groups, and the security covers all services and uh, data exchanges. Um, that's also uh, so. Should the see between um, data published by Geo Server um, or um, the associated metadata, which is which resides in Geo Network. Um, there is an implementation to run uh, such a consistency check. This is the graphical admin interface uh, of Geo to France. Um, so yeah, it kind of gives you access, access to some of the things I've already talked about, admin of users and groups, and more general settings, also looking at the server performance and so on. Um, there is a, a way of defining access rights spatially. So here some community may only have access to uh, a certain area and that can also be done um, using a, yeah, a map-based approach. Um, just a few more slides on uh, monitoring the spatial data infrastructure. Um, yeah, so you, you can uh, uh, check which layers were um, the most popular or yeah, most downloads. And um, then a general um, statistic also, the number of requests over a certain time period. Um, and uh, here we also have a list of services that were called um, during a certain time type of service. Right. So there's a number of ways how you can yeah, um, know more about or learn more about the GeoOrchestra project. We have the main website, geoorchestra.org. Um, the GitHub project, obviously. There is a few mailing lists. Um, this, this is the link to our continuous uh, integration um, domain. And um, we also have some more information on the um, Camp to Camp website. So that's, that's it for now. Thanks. Thank you, Andras, for the presentation. Uh, Paul, you have a question? So thank you for that presentation. I was I was uh, surprised to see Shogun there in the, in, in, in G Orchestra. Is uh, the technologies are similar? Is it, I was mostly interested in the single sign-on aspect. Is that is that easy to do? I've been the project manager for the integration of Shogun for Deutsche Telekom. We worked with uh, Terrestris, uh, and uh, both projects, uh, G Orchestra and uh, Shogun, are based with on the Spring framework. So we see that it's very easy to integrate both technologies. And in this, con in this specific context, we use a GeoOrchestra's backend plus uh, the security proxy of GeoOrchestra. And uh, Shogun Viewer has been uh, integrated behind the security proxy of GeoOrchestra as, as the viewer. Is it possible to customize the UI, and how much is it possible to customize it? 
customization of G Orchestra yeah. in general. Well, I, Emmanuel might be able to expand on this, but um, the code is accessible. So I guess the question is, because the, 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 the main components are quite frequently used, such as Geo server, Geo network, so you, you may want to yeah, kind of think carefully. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. since I know that Geo network has built in uh, some kind of customization, I was wondering if every little piece of the uh, SDI has uh, this oh, yeah. a built-in opportunity. Mm -hmm. So if the if this geo the latest version, for example, of Geo Orchestra has the latest customizations and extensions of some of those yeah. sub features, again maybe. So we integrate the latest version of Geo Server, Geo Network, and so on. And um, we have a, we have tests that make sure that together the bundle works well behind the security proxy, and that some specific use cases, when you manage a special data infrastructure, it works. And so we maintain a, a generic version of Geo Orchestra, and then we have customer specific projects to customize, to adapt some workflow to specific needs. So it's fully customizable. The more you customize, the farther you are from the, and then <laughs> the, <laughs> the most difficult of the good is. Yeah. Any plan for integrating uh, with QGIS server so you can leverage on uh, metadata framework in QGIS 3? I mean, good point. We, we, <laughs> yes, I mean, please. we know that we've made some attempts on a different project, the GeoMapFish. There is ongoing work with integrating more and more services coming from QGIS server. But what's the latest for Geo? Yeah, it's a very good point. Uh, the, the whole I have the feeling the whole geospatial community moves to QGIS, to QGIS server as well in the in the near future. So, a special data infrastructure should also be able to handle services provided by QGIS server. If if someone would like to add something. It's a, it's a slightly different use case, but we have a presentation at, at 2.30 that may match your expectation. But yeah, please. Thanks. I'm interested in how do you consume the GeoTIFF? Is it uh, via WMS with the GeoServer, or are you using cloud-optimized GeoTIFFs? It supports Cox uh, Cloud Optimized Geotiff on, on S3. On, on AWS S3, for example, you can put the Geotiff there, and GeoServer will be able to, is able to read them and to publish them as WMS. One last question. Then I would like to thank you for attending this session. And uh, wish you a good lunch. See you this afternoon. <laughs>